I never thought of that. And, uh, <laughs> I am now liberated from this uh, body of a fox spirit. Uh, can you do me one last favor? Uh, my corpse is now uh, resting in a cave around the other side of the mountain. Can you give me a monastic uh, uh, funeral? He says, sure, and the spirit disappears. So he tells the assembly that right after the, mid the midday meal, they will uh, be going around and uh, having a, a funeral. And everybody's confused because nobody's in the infirmary. Uh, um, they hadn't heard of any deaths. Um, and then what do they know? Right after the meal, they, they go out and they go around the mountain and he pokes into this hole and pulls out a dead fox and they give it a, a monastic funeral. Well, uh, um, later that evening, uh, Chow Cho gives a talk in which he explains the whole story. And uh, um, one of his students, uh, Wang Bo uh, steps forward and says, Sir, what if that old Chow Cho gave the right answer each time he was asked a question? What then? Now, you have to kind of picture this. Uh, uh, Chow Cho was famous for being short in a short culture. Uh, four feet tall. You know, like, you know, a little person. And um, Wang Bo was, is said to have been seven feet tall. Uh, when a giant in his age, a big guy, and then all these weird Buddha marks like the bulbous forehead. <laughs> so um, not even particularly uh, 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 anything but big. And uh, so uh, Chow Cho's fingers is stick. Come here. I'll explain it to you. Now, when uh, a Zen teacher with a stick says, come here, <laughs> in our tradition, that's generally a dangerous moment. <laughs> Wang Bo comes to his teacher, and he's big. So long before he can get to you know, Chow Cho's furthest reach, he can lean in and go, Chow Cho. laughs and he laughs and he said I thought the, the, the barbarian had a red beard and it's a reference to uh, uh, Bodhidharma the red bearded barbarian <laughs> right here graphic <laughs> now in graphic example uh, we arranged for this <laughs> and uh, uh, Gloriosky's, here's a red bearded barbarian. So, what do we make of this? Uh, 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 people love this case. I mean, it is what a, it's a ghost story. It uh, has all these kind of uh, ins and outs. And Zen koans very rarely turn on ethical uh, uh, issues. And that becomes a trap. And for us, again, on this uh, session where we're considering uh, uh, what it means to lead uh, an intimate life uh, 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 without being plugged into the larger picture. It can be a mere moralism. Uh, my uh, uh, koan teacher was raised a Roman Catholic in, in Tasmania, uh, which is a little island to the south of Australia, very, very isolated rural community. Uh, and he was fond of saying, uh, um, um, we're not Methodists. And he's actually, that's actually a fairly sophisticated thing for somebody who was raised in Tasmania as a Roman Catholic, uh, because the old idea of the Methodist Church was that it was a, a, a particular attention to precision, uh, detail, and ethical uh, moral codes. Um, um, and it's not, we're not about we're not about that. Um, but <laughs> if we aren't careful, we'll be reborn as a fox 500 times. So you know, we have to play play this 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 uh, hand we're dealt with great care. Uh, 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 if 
for us to really understand that being one with, not evading, finding the, the dance of intimacy with uh, our, our lives, we, we need to reference that last part of the, of the poem, um, um, in which uh, we're asked really an interesting question. So what if you give the right answer? You know, what if Doan gives the right answer every time? What then? And uh, um, the hint in there, well, the hint is actually found in the verse, which I, I since I can't memorize anything, I have to actually yank it out. Uh, uh, Wu Min, who anthologi anthologized the, uh, this, this case here, uh, always appended uh, a little homily and a, and a poem. Um, the poem is uh, not falling, not evading, two faces of the same die. Yeah. Not evading, not falling, a thousand mistakes, ten thousand mistakes. Our way is sometimes called the way of one continuous. Do we get the right answer? Do we get the wrong answer? If we get the wrong answer, we're born 500 times as a fox. We get the right answer, well, you know, there might still be 500 lifetimes as a fox. Um, we have to find what it is that we're really engaged in. And for me, the case is just so lovely because it pushes us from this burning life and death question, well, how do we live our lives? How are we actually engaged? And this is the work we're, 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 we're engaged in here, is to reflect on, on uh, this, these, these attempts at describing the intimate life, the, the way of, uh, of, uh, of harmony and balance, uh, uh, where everything has consequences. And, uh, uh, and we're told, come here. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> and then in a playful slap of recognition, what's being recognized? What are we being invited to recognize? Now, I go a long way around the bar, but uh, uh, Wu Min uh, decides it's got to be really short. So he says, not falling under the law of cause and effect, why should this prompt 500 lives as a fox? Not evading the law of cause and effect. Why should this prompt a return to human life? If you have the single eye of realization, you will appreciate how old Bai Chang lived 500 lives as a fox, as lives Any questions? <laughs>